Good afternoon, you should be seeing me enjoy page coming to you live, live on YouTube. Well, as you know, February is Black History Month, and every so often I'm going to pop on here and, and do some videos about some stories, some people in black history, you know. And um, one lady I'm glad for you is one of the fastest ladies in the world, the late Miss Flores Dolores Griffith Joyner, a.k.a. Flojo. Now, Flojo was a, a legend in the 80s as an Olympic uh, uh, sprinter. You know, she and she's well known for a fashion style. You know, if you ever remember, if you ever grew up you know, like I was, I saw Flo Jo, you would be astonished by how well she was dressed and how style she was, especially in the competition is um, track and field. Now, Flo Jo was born in Calif in Los Angeles, California, to Robert and Florence Griffin. Now, she was number seven out of eleven kids, and she was born December the twelfth of tw December twelfth. December 12th, December 21st of 1959. Now, her family she was officially called Dee Dee. And as it was coming up, they grew up originally in Little Rock, California, before the family moved to Jordan Downs Public Housing in Watts. Now, she was an athletic child growing up. In elementary school, she joined the Sugar Ray Robinson organization running track meets on the weekends. By the time she got to Jordan High School, she was she won track she won the Jesse Owens Youth Games twice in a row. Now, by her senior year in '78, she showed an interest in fashion, and she persuaded members of her track team to wear tights with their uniforms. She finished sixth at the CIF California State Meet, behind two of her future teammates in the Olympics. By the time she graduated from Jordan, she set records in sprinting and in long jump. Florence attended um, California State University at Northridge, where she met her future Olympic um, uh, coach, B Bobby Kersey. Now, Bobby Kersey is, was known for coaching not just Flo Jo, but also um, Gail Devers, and he was married to um, Jackie Joyner, you know, who later became his wife and also uh, Flo Jo's future sister-in-law. Now, another team included two uh, n two future Olympic legends that won national championships during her time at um, the Calif University of California. Now, by the next year, she had to drop out because of financial problems, and you know, so she took a job as a banker. But by '88, Bobby Kersey was able to find some financial support for her to get back. And he became, he, at the time, he was also coaching the University of California, UCLA. Now, well, now by 83, Flo Jo competed at, at the first world championship of athletics, where she placed fourth in the 200 meter sprint. The NA4 she qualified for the Olympics in the 200 meter de distance with second with the second fastest time at the Olympic trials. Now 84 summer games Flo won silver for the 200 meter and after the Olympics she you know spent less time running. She ran at the uh, IAAF the International Association of Athletic Federation Grand Prix finale. She skipped the 85 US National Championships and returned working at the uh, working at the bank and doing styling hairs and nails. In her spare time, she was briefly engaged to a, to a champion Olympic hurdle, but that relationship ended. Then she later met her future husband, Al Joyner, who is the uh, brother of Jackie Joyner um, Kersey, at the 84 Olympic trials. And he was a, he was a, triple, he was a triple jump champion himself. They both met other, they both met back, they both originally met each other back in the 80 um, Olympic trials, and then they got married in 87. Now, Flo, Flo Joe decided to make her return to track, and she competed in 87 World Championships in Rome, Italy. She placed second in the 200 meter sprint. That year, she had ranked second in track and field news world rankings. Now, she was also ranked seventh in the the 100 meter, and competed several um, contests in, in one meet and ran 10.96 seconds. That's pretty good in the 100 meter by 
eight to to six to point eight eighty seconds. She made the second to the American holder, Evelyn Ashford. By the time she got to the Olympic trials, she stunned ev- she stunned everyone by spinning ten point five forty nine seconds in the one hundred meter, which became a new world record. Now, Flo was me. She was fast. I mean, you know. Yeah, she's the fastest woman in the world. I mean, it's just surprising how fast she was. Now, by the finish of the uh, 88 games, people were calling her Flojo. At the game, she was already getting records, setting records, and even beating um, her rival, Evelyn Ashford, records by 0.30 seconds. In the 100-meter sprint finals, she won at 10.5. 5.4 seconds. In the 200 meter semis, she set the world record of 21.556 seconds, then broke the record at the finals by 0.22 seconds. Later, she finished second to in the um, 4 by 400 meter rally. She left the uh, 88 games with uh, four medals, three golds, and one silver, and it was considered the second biggest haul for a female in track and field in history. Now that's already been broken by Alicia, by uh, by Allison Felix. Uh, I think Alex has like ten. I think she broke the record. You know. Now, after the games, Flo Jo decided to look at, into opportunities outside of running. Now, she announced retirement in February of '89. She got into several business endeavors from fashion, hair, even had her own line of toys in, in her image. She eventually um, got into um, with the NBA where she had designed um, new um, uniforms for the uh, 89 Indiana Pacers. Also, she also did a little stuff on TV. I mean, she, she was a guest star of several TV shows, especially a memory episode where she was on... Um, uh, 227, and I mean one time she did an episode of um, Arsenio Hall. We would get her ready in the back, and then by the time she came out, you know, the show was about over. I mean, it took a lot to dress up Flojo. Now, in the 90s, she gave birth to her daughter, you know, with her, her husband, um, Al, in the, in, um, on the, um, December 20, December, December of, um, Simmer uh, of, of, 15, of 15th of um, 90. Now, her name was Mary. Her name is Mary Ruth Joyner. Now, Mary, she I saw her episode of um, America Got Talent. And the girls can sing. She's a pretty good singer, you know. And she, you know, I don't know if she's. I think she's still singing. I don't know if she's done that thing like that. But you know, now that says Jones, she now she wanted to do a comeback and compete running. Her goal was to make record to make a record in the. 100 and the 200 meters and the 400 meters. She was steady training for the uh, U.S. Olympic trials, but however, you know, about with tendonitis in her right leg ended her chance of returning. Two years after that, she attempted to return to sprinting Flojo, but then at that, that she died, you know, in, you know, September 21st of 98, and that was sad. I remember when I heard that, I was just, it's just, you know, it, just broke my heart. You know, she's a beautiful person and so young. And, you know, she has so much to give the world. She died in her neighborhood of um, Canyon Crest in California. She was only 38 years old. Um, the cause of death was a congestive uh, vascular brain anomaly. Now, according to the family, she had a series of seizures over a period of times in the 90s. And because of those seizures, many accused Flojo of taking performance enhancers. During the 80 games, she was suspicious, suspicious causes of the records she broke, and they caused to prove that she might have been on steroids. Especially from her early performances. Flo was tested often, and some said the uh, Olympic um, Committee, the IOC, Medical, you know, commission, single flow Joe out. They did rigorous and frequent testing for steroids. Though all the testing, she was never found using any kind of performance enhancers. 
Before the death, the U.S. United States track and field inducted her in 95 Hall of Fame. And by 2000, the, the uh, 102nd Street School in L.A. changed their name to Florence Griffin Joyner Elementary School. Yeah. And she was an amazing person. I mean... I mean, you look at how her scowl was. She had like, you know, that one leg um, um, track suit, and then she had one where she had a hood. I mean, you know, she was just an Avenger. I mean, no one ever had her style. Now, there's some some runners. I remember there was a a runner named Shirley Chaplin. They call her Purple Rain. She 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 based her style on Flo Jo. Um, Flo Jo was an idol for runners such as Alicia, Alex and Felix. Uh, Call it, I mean, the Jenner, uh, you know, Gail Devers. The list goes on and on of how many women she inspired in this sport. And, you know, she's a real miss. She's a legend. And even though some of her records have been beaten, you know, they've been beaten, I think, uh, I think it was Run From Jamaica beat one of her records. And some others, I think, some even Gail Devers beat her records because Gail Devers was a, a student of the Bobby Kersey. But Flojo was just amazing, you know. She had beauty, grace, and style. Something you've never seen, especially in a sport of track, you know. Especially from a woman, you know. And I think, you know, a lot of, there's some, some, some runners are still trying to emulate her style. Because I said there was a woman named Shirley Taplin called Purple Rain. And she tried to be like, kind of like Flojo, but she didn't get too far in her career. You know, I think after a while she competed a few years and after that she dropped out. But like I said, it's just, no one could never compare to her. And she was the greatest. And there's so much she could have done more if she had lived a little longer. Especially, I think she would have been a great teacher and a great coach. But anyway, we miss you, Flo Joe. You were the greatest. She your man, George Page. Like, subscribe. Don't like, subscribe. I'm out.